Hello and welcome to How to Play Baccarat. Baccarat is a casino game that for some reason people really don't know how to play and think is really confusing. I'm here to tell you it's an easy game and by the end of this video, you're going to know how to play Baccarat. It's a lot of fun. Stick with me. Here we go. First, I'm going to go over the rules. Then I'm going to go over a few hands. It's so simple. So when you sit down at a Baccarat table, and it can be a mini table, a full table, you're essentially looking at only two things. This here, banker, and this here, player. Imagine it's going to be two people playing a card game, and you're betting on who wins. Will the banker win, or will the player win? And you're betting on that. So here's the first thing you need to know about Baccarat, which is you don't need to know anything. Baccarat has so many rules that you don't do anything. The rules will play the game for you. So unlike Blackjack, where you decide if you want to hit or if you want to stand, in Baccarat, you're only making one decision. Do I bet on the banker or do I bet on the player? And everything else, you sit back and you watch. Baccarat is actually the simplest game to learn how to play. So even if you've never played the game before, all you need to do is sit there at the table and you'll be playing as well as anybody who's been playing this game for 20 years. So in this video, I at least want to teach you how to be able to sit there and know what's going on. To win a round, it's essentially this. You need to be the closest to nine. You add up two cards, the person who's closest to nine wins. If you go over nine, you subtract 10 and that's your number. There really isn't much more than that. So if somebody drew a four and a five, that's a nine. That's a win. That's really the, one of the best hands you can have. If, let's say, you drew a 9 and a 2, well, that's 11. You subtract 10. It's really only a 1. So the goal of the game is to predict which hand will be the highest and be the winner. Now, I suppose there is one extra thing, which is if you look over here, it could also be a tie. And you could choose to bet on a tie. But most of the time, it's not going to be a tie. You're betting on really the banker or the player. So when you come to a Baccarat table, you sit down and you either put your money on the banker or on the player, in which case you're going to watch essentially a card game get played out, by the way, by the dealer who is playing both hands because the rules are so specific, and the dealer is going to play the banker hand and the player hand, you're going to watch, and if the banker wins and you bet on the banker, then you win. If the player wins and you had bet on the player, then you won. In the rare cases that there's a tie and you would bet on the tie, you win. But the truth is, very few people actually bet on the tie. The player and the banker are each dealt two cards. Depending on what those two cards are, there may be a third card dealt. Now stick with me on that. So essentially two cards are given to the banker, two cards are given to the player. The goal of the game is to be the person closest to the number nine. Let's talk about the value of a card. So number cards, a two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all count as the value of their cards. So a two is worth two, an eight is worth eight, and nine is worth nine. Now aces, like in blackjack, which are one and 11, are different. In Baccarat, aces merely count as ones. And just like in blackjack, where kings, queens, and jacks are worth 10, in Baccarat, they're worth zero. So a 10, jack, king, and queen all count as zero. So all you need to remember is an ace is one, two through nine is the face value, Kings, queens, and jacks are worth zero. Now, one thing I've noticed is people don't look at the cards as zeros. Kings, queens, and jacks are not zeros. People look at them as tens, and then what they do is they subtract the value of 10, which is why I say they're worth zero. So in other words, if you had a face card and a three, a jack and a three, even though that would be 13, you then subtract 10, and that gives you three. And the way it works is this. You add up your cards. If the player or the banker has an 8 or a 9, then it's called a natural, and that hand stands. But if neither player has an 8 or a 9, then a third card could be dealt. Let me explain. If the player's total is a 0 through a 5, which means a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then automatically a third card is dealt. But if the player has a 6 and 7... Then the hand stands at six or seven. And if the player has an eight or nine,
then it's called a natural, and it also stands. And let's face it, eight or nine is actually very close to getting a nine, if not a nine, so it's basically a winning hand. So you've bet on the player. If they get an eight or a nine, it's a natural. If the total is zero through five, a third card is drawn. If it's a six or seven, the player's hand stands. Now, the banker's rules are sort of the same, but slightly different. And let me explain what I mean. Number one is the player always goes first. And what I mean by that is the player always goes first, so the banker's rules could be slightly different once the player stands. If the player draws that third card, the value of the card drawn by the player and the value of the banker's hand determines if the banker gets a third card. There's a whole chart on this I'm going to show you in a second. But again, it all comes down to rules. As a player sitting at the Baccarat table, you actually don't have to know this. You can just watch it play in action because the rules are always the same. You can even ask for a copy of the rules and they'll give it to you while you're sitting at the table. So now, if the player draws that third card, the value of that card by the player and the value of the banker's hand determines if the banker gets a third card. A little tricky, but stick with me. Here you are. Take a look at this chart. On the left side is what the banker's score is based on their two cards. Across the top here is what the player's third card is. So if the banker has five and the player draws a third card and it's a four, then there's a hit. But if the player's card is a three, it stands. This is consistent in every Baccarat table. Whether you memorize this or not, the dealer knows this, and you're just watching it play out. There is one thing to know about the payout. Even though it feels like it's just a heads or tails, one-to-one -one game, which essentially it is, it's one of the best odds in the entire casino, if the player wins, they get even money, meaning if you bet on the player and you win and you bet $10, you'll get back $10. But if you bet on the banker and the banker wins, you get even money minus a 5% commission. And this is a little tricky. So if you bet $10 on the player and the player wins you get back $10. If you bet $10 on the banker and the banker wins, you get $10 minus a 5% commission, so you get $9.50. And that is basically the casino's edge, since this is essentially a one-to-one -one even money type of game. The way a casino makes money on Baccarat is by people betting on the banker and losing 5% of a commission. Now let's talk about a tie. If you bet on a tie, it pays eight to one, which is great. Well, like I said, ties don't happen that often. But if it is a tie and you have bet on the player or the banker, then there's no money exchanging hands. It's just a push and you'll play the next round. So let's go ahead and actually play this game. And play. Let's just put $5 on the player and deal. That's the only decision you have to make. The rest of it plays by itself. As the player, I drew a king and a five, which is 15, or five. The banker drew two queens, which is 20, or zero. So because I had five, I draw. I drew one extra card, and the total, 11, or one, because whenever you go above nine, you just subtract back. You, you don't use that first digit. So the dealer, therefore, because I only had one, he drew, based on that chart, and he drew a four, so his total was four. The closest to nine was the banker, the banker won. Let's try this again. I'm going to rebet on the player. So I drew a king and a queen, which is zero. The banker drew a five and a five, which is 10, which is also zero. So I got the extra card, but I drew, drew a jack, which is zero. The extra card, therefore, also went to the banker, who drew a 10, which is also zero, so it was a tie. Bet on the banker this time. I'll bet $5 on the banker, and let's go. So the player came up with a 7 and a 5, which is 12, or he has 2. Remember, he's trying to get closest to 9. The banker came up with a 9 and a 4, which is 13, or 3. So because the player had two, based on the rules where we explain where the player has to draw if he has a zero through five, he drew, he got a one, so his final total was three, 
based on the fact that his final total was three, the banker had to draw another card, got a king, which is zero points, so he remained at three. It is another tie. And remember how I said ties don't happen that often? It's kind of crazy because, wow, um, I'll stay playing, betting on the banker. Got a seven and 11, which is one. The banker got a queen and a two. The queen is worth zero, so she had a two. So the player, because he had a one, remember, zero through five, he's going to draw. He drew. He got a queen, so he stayed at a one. The banker drew a queen, which is also worth zero, so they stayed at a two. Therefore, the banker won. I won. I got almost even money. I paid a 5% commission. Let's do one last time. I'll put down $100 on the player. One last time, folks. Here we go. This is That's the only decision you have to make. So let's go through ex exactly what happened there. I'm on the player. The player draws a 9 and a 4, which is 13, which is 3. The banker draws a jack, which is worth 0, and a 3. So they have 3. So it's tied at 3 because I have 0 through 6. I have to draw again. I get 8, which is very close to the 9. And now let's go to that chart where I have an 8 and the dealer has a 3. They get to draw as well, but they did not get any closer. In fact, they got a jack, which is worth zero. So as the player, I won. That is all you need to know about playing Baccarat. That's the whole game. Hope you enjoyed it.